This story is called Miss Lollipop's Lion, and the story and pictures are by Judy Varga, and this book belongs to Miss Loretta, and when she was a little girl, she wrote her name in it here in the back of the book. So when you see her, you say, Miss Loretta, I saw your book. Miss Lollipop's Lion. There's the lion. She's got a beautiful bow in the top of her hair. Miss Lola Lollipop paced the floor in her kitchen. She was terribly worried. There was li very little food in the house, practically no money, and she had a great many mouths to feed. Living with her were 14 cats, nine dogs, three rabbits, seven canaries, four parakeets, two guinea pigs, and five hamsters. Not to mention the donkey in the backyard. Miss Lollipop couldn't look at a stray animal without bringing it home. She couldn't say no when someone asked, please give my pet a home, I can no longer keep it. And homeless animals somehow knew they would find a place to stay if they came and sat on Miss Lola Lollipop's doorstep. Miss Lollipop sighed a big sigh and began to divide the little food she had among her pets. She gave each animal only a spoonful. Even so, there was hardly enough to go around. They all looked hungry and begged for more. Just as she decided to give them her own supper as well, she heard a scratchy sort of noise at the front door. My, my, she said as the noise grew louder. It must be a homeless cat or a dog. I'd better go let it in. Miss Lollipop opened the door and there on her doorstep step sat, not a pussy cat, not a dog, but a lion, the biggest lion Miss Lollipop had ever seen. Oh, do come in, you poor thing, said Miss Lollipop to the lion. Welcome to the family. But to herself, she said, whatever shall I do? Where shall I find food this poor homeless lion will need? The lion padded into the parlor and spied six of the cats and five of the dogs, and he pounced on them, knocking over furniture, vases, and whatever was in the way. He chased the cats, and he chased the dogs, and he snarled at the parakeets, and he roared at the hamsters, and he put his big paw on one of the rabbits and held him fast. He let him go and caught him again making terrible rumbling noises all the while. You must stop that at once, said Miss Lollipop in a very strict voice. Aren't you ashamed teasing someone so much smaller than you? The lion looked very surprised and let the rabbit go. He lay down and did not move, not even when one of the pussycats started playing with the fringe on his tail. I'll fix you something to eat after you have a bath, said Miss Lollipop. All the pets who come to stay with me must have a bath. That's a rule of the house. She ran the bath water and fetched the scrubbing brush. Come along now, she said to the lion, but the lion would not budge. He did not look as if he wanted a bath at all. No use arguing with me, said Miss Lollipop. She pushed and pulled and heaved and shoved until she got the lion into the tub. The lion opened his mouth and showed all of his teeth. He growled in a nasty sort of way, but Miss Lollipop paid no attention. She scrubbed and soaped and washed as if she didn't hear him. She knew how to bring up pets the proper way. She wrapped the lion in a big towel and rubbed him dry. He smelled like rose-scented soap. I'd better do something about that messy-looking mane of yours. It's disgraceful, said Miss Lollipop. She combed out the lion's mane and tied it with a pretty green ribbon on top to keep the hair from falling in his eyes. Now, you may stay in the parlor and play with the other pets while I fix you something to eat, said Miss Lollipop. She searched the almost empty icebox but all she could find was her own supper, two hamburgers and a little leftover rice. She poured what milk she had left into a saucer and brought the food to the lion on a neat tray. 
The lion gobbled up the hamburgers and lapped up the milk. He turned his back on the rice and began to slink away. Finish your rice, said Miss Lollipop. Finish it at once. We have no food to waste around here. The lion ate the rice, every bit of it. Miss Lollipop sat down in front of the fire. The lion lay down at her feet. He purred a while and was soon fast asleep. Miss, but Miss Lollipop could not sleep. She sat all night in the armchair trying to think of a way to earn some money so she could buy food for all of her pets and for the lion too. But she only knew how to care for animals and crochet uh, antimascars. <laughs> and nobody wanted to buy antimascars anymore. Early in the morning, she played with all of the pets to make them forget how hungry they were. She was teaching the lion a few tricks when she heard the doorbell. I do hope it isn't someone with a new pet, thought Miss Lollipop. I simply can't take another one in. There were five policemen and a fat man who looked very upset at the door. We are looking for a fierce lion who escaped from the circus last night. Have you seen him? asked the policeman. No, I have not, said Miss Lollipop. But a very nice lion came to my door looking for a home. He is inside playing. I've grown very fond of him already. The fat man and the policeman rushed into Miss Lollipop's house. The lion stood in the parlor door. He began to roar. Quiet, said Miss Lollipop. I can't hear my own voice. The lion sat down among the pussycats. He didn't roar. He didn't snarl. Not even a little bit. Jump and catfish, said the fat man. That lion in your parlor, playing with your pussycats, is the fierce li fiercest lion in my circus, and no one can tame him. You wouldn't by any chance like a job as a lion tamer. I would pay you a lot of money. What nonsense you talk, said Miss Lollipop. Why, he's the sweetest lion one could ever hope to meet. I'll come to work for you, though. I need money very much, and I never dreamed I could earn it in such an easy way. Miss Lo Lola Lollipop became the most famous lion tamer ever. She never began, uh, she never again had to worry about money or how to feed her 14 cats and nine dogs, three rabbits, seven canaries, four parakeets, two guinea pigs, five hamsters, a donkey in the backyard, and the 27 new pets who found their way to her doorstep. And sometimes the lions came home to spend the weekend with her because the lions loved Miss Lollipop and Miss Lollipop loved the lions.